Hey everyone, it's me, your friend Pat, back again for another exciting episode of Measuring Dev Skills with Code Signal. I'm lucky enough to be joined again by Michael Newman, uh, a great friend of the show who heads the product engineering team at Code Signal. Michael, welcome back. Thanks, Pat. It's good to be back. Awesome. We've been looking at a lot of task creation types, right? Uh, the ability for a user to create their own type of tasks. And the idea is we want to have something that's sort of realistic to the job that they're hiring for, right? Uh, so one of the things we haven't really covered so far is database kind of stuff. So today I was thinking we could take a look at how we could create an SQL task. That makes sense. That's part of the full stack. So when you're you know, hiring for front end and then server and, and database, this is one of those key components that we want to be able to measure for. Perfect. Let's take a look. Okay, so we're back here in the screen where we can select what type of task we want to create. I've got SQL selected. And if I go to next, I notice that we have some options in terms of what language we want to use specifically. So this is nice. I mean, as far as I understand, these are sort of like the big three in terms of uh, SQL database languages, right? These are certainly uh, three of the, the most popular SQL variants. Uh, we you know, base the languages that we support based on the requests that we get and the demand that there is. So this covers uh, the majority of what we've heard so far. Perfect. So for today, I'm going to select a MySQL task. We'll go ahead and create that. And so far, I mean, everything we see, at least on the left side of the screen, is pretty familiar. I'm just going to put in a very creative title for our task that we want to create today. I'll get to the description in a minute, but before we do, I just want to take a look at this tab because this is where it's pretty different actually from what we've seen before. So if I look at these, I'm seeing stuff like setup script and teardown script. This mm -hmm. could be a little intimidating if it weren't for all these great examples that are already sort of commented out so that we could follow this. And uh, that's actually what I want to do today. I mean, personally, I'm not very good with SQL, so I'm just going to use this example to begin with. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to uncomment these things. So uh, as I do that, Michael, could you just sort of walk us through the flow of all this stuff? Like when is this setup script going to happen, the test cases, et cetera? Yeah, absolutely. So the way that this works, um, what's special about SQL tasks compared to our single function task type, for example, is that the the setup is written in SQL. So that's why, you know, when, when you're creating a test case, it's a script, it's a file. You're, you're writing a SQL script to generate the test case to seed the database with data, rather than, you know, having something that is data input and data output. Uh, and that allows you some additional power and flexibility as you're creating your test cases. Maybe you want to do something dynamic, like insert the current date uh, in one column of your, your table. You can do that because you have this SQL variant that you're using to write the setup scripts. However, you know you may also have some duplication uh, between your test cases. Some things will stay the same, uh, some will be different. So we took a page from you know, behaviorally driven test frameworks that we like, like Jasmine for JavaScript, uh, and you know, introduced a setup script and a teardown script so that those repeated parts can be factored out. So if you have something that needs to happen before each test case, put it in the setup script, that'll run before each. Uh, something that needs to be done to clean up after each setup script, you can put that in the teardown and that'll be done after each. And that way, you know, you don't have to keep repeating uh, anything that is shared uh, between each case. Cool. Yeah. So basically setup script, test case, teardown script, setup script, next test case, <laughs> teardown script. That's kind of the order that this is going to play in, right? That's right. Yeah. I mean, you know, you could do it all with only the test cases and without the setup and teardown. It's just depending on what you want to do. If you're repeating certain actions, it may be preferable um, to only define that once. That's right. Cool. And one of the things I forgot to mention, but I, I really like that, as you said, all of this stuff, all of the uh, test cases, the setup, like all of this is written in SQL. So this is familiar to anyone who's used to working in this language, right? We don't have to force them to learn anything new in order to create these test cases. That, that's right. You're using the same syntax and have the same language support as you're inserting data that the candidate will have when they're querying or, or mutating it. Nice and familiar stuff. Uh, okay, so basically, I'm just going to put in a basic description. I'm going to say, find all the products with a price over 500. We've got a products table here. We've got a users table. And so I'm just going to throw in an author solution here for what we want this to be. Yeah, so basically, we're just going to find all the products that have a price over 500. 
Uh, so right now, I don't actually have an output for what we expect, but based on the values we have in here, we'd probably expect it's going to be these two products over here. So do I have to then sort of write this out in like a, a table -y kind of way or? Well, that's a, a great question. So, you know, when you create a task, one of the things that you probably have in mind is what a correct answer looks like. Uh, if you don't, you, sh you should, it's, it's important for reviewing and building the task and validating it, right? So we have this author solution tab uh, and uh, I believe you just populated that with uh, the correct solution already. So if we have the input data and we have the author solution, the great thing is that we can just go ahead and run the author solution against the input to produce our correct or expected output. So if you take a look at the test cases table, you have this great button that says, auto generate output from author solution. And <laughs> it does exactly what it says it will. You can go ahead and click on it and boom, I nice. uh, have uh, the output auto generated. So we can click on that tab um, and you're gonna see that it's just right there as CSV and it's just the result of running your correct solution uh, against the, the input. Perfect. Well, I mean, I'm looking at this, I'm thinking we've got everything filled out here. I think we have enough here to actually save the task. We've got a database task now, right? We've got uh, something that's officially SQL. We could use this to test candidates, uh, although it is pretty basic. So maybe we'll sort of look into how realistic this actually is as a, an interview task. But for now, it's asking me to run the sample test to see the output. I am curious about what the output's gonna look like for this task. So, okay, evidently it's not correct. Uh, what we've given right. here. So I should probably put the actual solution in. We'll run the tests. And then something I'm noticing is we can see the output and the expected output, but I'm not actually noticing the inputs in here. So I'm gonna go back to editing because something I forgot to mention is we probably wanna specify which tables we're actually making visible to the users, right? That's so right. right now we have two tables. We've got users and products. Uh, I'm wondering, would there ever be a situation where we don't want all of these to be available to the user? Absolutely. Uh, so when you specify which input table should be made visible, we'll go ahead and dump those tables into the test cases. If your data are very small, uh, that, you know, especially for the sample tests, that may be acceptable as a UI experience. In this case, they are very small. There aren't very many rows in each table. So showing all of the tables and all of the rows in every table is totally fine. Uh, if the data you know, are very numerous uh, and there are very many rows, there may be some, uh, you know, it, it may become very long to look at and scroll through and read. Uh, so in that case, you may prefer to simply uh, define the schema uh, in the description and mm -hmm. tell them what tables are available to be queried without actually making the full tables, you know, visible for each test case. Um, and because it's SQL, it's relational, it has a schema, generally providing the schema is, is enough. Um, so you have the option to, to choose. Right. So I could just sort of include more detail in my description, as you said, to Absolutely. give them an yeah. idea of what they're trying to query. And I did notice that even before we had these visible, we were still able to run the solution. So evidently we're able to query these tables, even though they aren't necessarily visible to us, right? That, that's right. I mean, you can sort of iter iteratively build up your solution by just writing queries to see what's inside of the tables and examine them and print out the results. Um, so you can see them for each test case. That's also a viable way to to go about solving the task. Makes sense. Now, something I'll say in my limited experience with working with SQL is I find in general that the data is not necessarily super um, high immediacy. You know, it's kind of uh, almost hidden in a way, right? So the idea of basically just providing all these tables, making it nice and visible in sort of a familiar format. I mean, these are easy to read. Uh, it's easy to make the comparison in here. I, I definitely appreciate that. Uh, I would appreciate that as a candidate using this test. So that's nice stuff. Just wanted to acknowledge that. Uh, so 
in terms of making this task more realistic, let's actually go back and edit it. And let's think of something we might realistically act, actually want to ask a candidate. Basically, we're taking a look at this before in the setup script. We have these two tables right now, but I want to put in a third one because I noticed these two tables aren't really directly related to each other at all. Uh, it's not like one has a foreign key related to the other one. And so I just wanted to put in this other table that's going to sort of form a bridge between the two of them. and. Uh, and then I'm going to add some more data in. So the first thing we're going to have to do is take a look at our test case one input, and we'll just modify that to have some sales values as well so that it's actually all three of our tables in there. Looks good. And then basically, I'll just add a few more test cases because this one is pretty small. Uh, I want to add basically a medium sized one and a large sized one. So. I'll just paste that one in and then here's our other one, add test case. Okay, so now we have three of those. Uh, I'm also gonna change the actual task to make it something a little more realistic. So I'm gonna say, find the uh, first name, last name and price for each sale. Okay, so still pretty basic, but basically the idea is that we just wanna have uh, some data relating both the users and the products here. So I'll just put in my solution for that, for the author solution. And then we'll use that trick you showed us before. So we can get all of our outputs now by auto-generating from the author solution. Okay, great. Success. Uh, while we're waiting for these, by the way, is there ever a time where we're not going to have this check mark over here? Yeah, you can. So that's a really gr great question. Um, each part of this ideally should work together to have something that runs successfully and passes the test cases. So if you have you know, the input and a working author solution, you can get the right output. But uh, you, know, you can remove another piece of the puzzle and then kind of fill it in a, a different way. So if you have the input and the expected output, you can mm -hmm. check the author solution. So if you already knew the expected output or you had previously generated it and you wanna make some tweaks to your author solution, uh, you know, maybe refactor it a little bit. You can rerun it against the existing outputs without regenerating them uh, to see if your author solution is still correct. So actually, that's an interesting point because I noticed that all of these completed successfully. However, I'm now getting this syntax error. Any idea why I would be getting this error about the sales table already existing? That sounds like a setup or a teardown script issue. So we might want to debug whether we're properly... Uh, creating and, and dropping the, the table each time. Great point. Yeah. So, I mean, this sort of goes to show why we would want to actually drop the tables that we're creating in our setup script, right? Right. So, yeah, if the way that we're going to structure it is that we recreate the tables before each test case, then we, we do want to make sure that we drop it uh, in a way that um, allows it to be safely built back up in the next test case. Yeah, actually, that's another good point. I hadn't really thought about that, but we could have a situation where we maybe don't want to drop the tables, right? If we wanted to make it more cumulative, like we just keep adding more and more data to it and we want to make sure that the uh, the candidate solution continues to run on that. I think, I think it's definitely possible. Um, I would advise great caution because <laughs> I think it will make understanding the test cases um, somewhat complex, but it is definitely possible to build um, to build them in an iterative way. Cool. Uh, well, I'm just going to make sure my author solution is actually running right now. And if it works, okay, perfect. We'll save the task. Uh, so and the reason why it worked on each individual test case, by the way, is because as you're running it one by one, there's mm -hmm. no issue because it's just one test case. It's only when you run two or more that you're going to have an issue like that. So um, right, that's because why, it's wanting you know, to insert the exactly. teardown script in between each one, right? Exactly. Yeah. Cool, makes sense. So uh, I guess this is no longer a valid solution to uh, to this task, which means if I run the test, we should see that all of these are incorrect. Uh, great, yeah, zero out of three makes sense. And we'll just put in our actual solution to actually solve this. Although I guess since this is our author solution, we know it's gonna pass. <laughs> all right, so I'm so happy with the task we've created here. Very proud of it. We've got a bunch of data over here and it's running correctly. This seems like a fairly practical thing I would wanna ask someone about, make sure they have a good understanding of joins. Uh, but if we wanted to make it more complicated, let's say you know we also wanted to test them on 
stuff like uh, aggregation in SQL. Let's just uh, switch up the task a little bit and we'll see how actually straightforward it is to basically just change this into a whole nother task with the same data. So I'm going to say, find how much each user spent in total. And, you know, it would probably want to be a little more detailed about that, but uh, basically the only change I'm going to make here is the author solution. Cause that's really the only thing that should have to change here in terms of our data, setting it up, tearing it down, the test cases, that should all be the same. Oh, and I guess we didn't talk about this, but we could make the sales table also available to the user if we wanted to. However, it's it is the biggest one. So as you suggested, maybe better to keep it a little smaller. Uh, so in this case, now, since we have a different author solution, I want all of our test case outputs to be updated to that. So basically I'll just auto-generate each one of them. This is a lot nicer than having to rewrite all the test cases I'll, I'll just mention. It's, it's no fun to manually write CSV, that's for sure. Yeah, this, uh, thank you for the, the, uh, this considerate feature. This is definitely gonna save <laughs> me some time. Okay, cool. So if I save the task now, uh, hopefully this, yeah. Okay. Great task has been created. It looks good. So now we've got two SQL tasks for some nice, realistic on the job skills. We might want to actually test for, we could take a look at the solution, see if the user is understanding the nuances between left joins, inner joins, if they're dealing with nulls, uh, properly using the coalesce, for example. Uh, so I could see great practical value in this type of task. Yeah, that, that's right. I mean, I think that the, it's such a great point that duplication is really helpful for this task type. I mean, one of the powerful things about SQL tasks is that your setup is written in SQL and you're seeding a database. But once you have the database, you know, you have that state and you can do whatever you'd like with it. Uh, so it is really easy to take that setup, duplicate that as a starting point, and then, you know, just change the author solution um, to see maybe I wanted to measure something else. Maybe I wanted to query a different thing out of the database and we can, you know, check all kinds of, of different things using the same uh, setup, the same database creation and just a different expected query. Absolutely. Uh, I feel more powerful already. Uh, <laughs> so Michael, anything else you wanted to say about SQL tasks that we didn't cover today? I think this, this covers the, the gist of it. Uh, I think, you know, what the, the test case uh, creation process and, and generating from author solution is really the core of this task type. Something to be excited about right now, because the test cases are defined in uh, in SQL, you know, you have to write them in the variant of SQL that you're, you're coding with. So for this MySQL task, you have to write the test cases in MySQL. We've gotten the request a lot to allow, you know, translating the same task into multiple variants. So stay tuned, coming soon, we'll have um, translations where you can have, um, you know, the same SQL task where you can select each different variant uh, and, uh, you know, pick which one you want and, and have it linked together in a single task so that there's more option if you want to say, solve it in SQL, but I don't care as much which um, flavor you use. Nice. Yeah, that sounds exciting. Looking forward to it. Cool. Well, Michael, thanks so much for joining us. I, I mean, as I said, this seems like a, a really practically valuable kind of task. I, I definitely see this measuring signals a lot more accurately than something like a, a multiple choice quiz, right? If I'm actually trying to see if someone can, uh, can do SQL. Oh, absolutely. Um, the more close to writing queries that, that we can get, uh, the better a representation of your applied SQL knowledge. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us again. Uh, looking forward to the next one and bye for now. Thanks, Pat. Bye.